Welcome to episode 215 of Brutal Battle. Yes, it is Sean Creel back on this the couch. It used to be a couch. It used to be a couch. It used yeah. to be a couch. Now it's actually like these very nice yeah. Amish made wooden chairs. I'm used to like sinking in and falling backwards. Yeah. But this oh, I forgot. Um, Carlin is with us this episode as well. <laughs> exactly. So. This this chair has a lumbar roll though. If you sit all the way back, you can feel that. It's very nice. Anyway, so we're uh, I felt like I hijacked the last episode a little bit talking about my love what? for the uh, brewery society structure. So this time you I'm talked just about the the brewery society structure last I'm episode. Ta- talking about the brewery, oh. I did a little bit. Well, did was there something planned? Was there something you? Were, I thought there was like a message you were trying to get across. Message, to somebody. message. Was it for Patrick Rue? Uh, you know, I maybe, I, maybe it might have been it. Can't remember. We'll have I don't to, have to, we'll have we'll have to go, go back, back and listen. Yep, have to go back and listen to it. <laughs> but for now, uh, my plan is I'm going to let you talk. I'm going to let you go, and I'm going to let you talk about what do you want to talk about as far as your new job, as far as what's going on with the brewery currently. Got a little bit of that in the last episode, but. Throw it all out there. Maybe I'll just throw in some extra questions here and there, but, you know. No, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, that would be the best interview <laughs> ever. Like, eh, okay. No, really, it's, um, no, it's fine. What do you want to, no. <laughs> no, it's, it's been a lot of fun. Um, I'm about two months in now, uh, into the positions. I feel like I'm starting to get a feel for, for what it is, but yeah, basically we the company's never had a, a sales team at all before. Um, really? Just, it's, I mean... We had a we got a guy out in California that pretty much calls the the wholesalers and lets them know what we've got coming out and, and works with them on their orders and you know he'll he'll travel uh, the market a little bit but it's not no consistency in any one market he's kind of bouncing around the country um, so now we have a, a, a sales team of two um, <laughs> we've got Liz out in California mm, okay. and then I cover Maryland DC and Virginia um, are there with, plans to grow past two. Uh, yes, yes, there are okay. definitely plans I to assume, grow. I assume so. so. No, yeah, we're, we're, we're certainly looking to uh, build the team out. Uh, cool. It's kind of like a proof of concept, I guess, right now, you know, just uh, showing, trying to justify the investment in okay. in the team. Um, Makes sense. <clears throat> but it's been, it's been going incredibly well. well um, you know, we, we're just struggling now to keep up with production. Um, we've got space to, to add more fermenters at the brewery, uh, but that's obviously a pretty big investment as well. And right. it'll take a little while to get them online and, uh, and all, but things have been going tremendously well. Um, you know, it, it's kind of interesting when I go see accounts, um, in, in the DC market, we've got the store down there. So there's a lot more mm-hmm. brand awareness. So anytime I go into a, a bar or a liquor store in DC, they know exactly who I am. Cool. Anytime I go into a bar or liquor store in Maryland or, um, you know, outside of Northern Virginia, down in Virginia, uh, it's what, what brewery? Yeah. Who are you? <laughs> the yeah. brewery. What, what? Yeah. But which one? <laughs> so you're, so at this point you kind of have to blaze the trail. You have to kind of lay the track down because, and, and this is good. And I'm going to say it uh, not just because you're here and because you're a friend of mine, but you're a good salesperson. You're a very good salesperson. Thank you. And it's not just because you're you have good interpersonal skills, but it's also because you know your stuff. You can be educated and talk in an educated manner to people about the product, and you're passionate about it because not just because you like it, because you understand it. I'm not sure I could sell anything other than beer. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I never thought I would be in sales. In in and I mean, I, I would have told you you're. You're on drugs. Like I never, never thought of myself going into a sales profession in any way. Um, but I did love, you know, I've always been a huge fan of beer and craft beer, all the, the styles, uh, you know, the, the stories behind the beers and, um, love talking about it. And that's really when I'm, when I'm going on sales calls, it's all I'm doing is, is just talking to people about the talking beer. About beer yeah. I'm passionate about it. And I feel like if I can, uh, instill that passion in them for the the product as well. They're going to be a, a, a fan and go out and talk to their customers about it and yeah. push the products. Um, and you know, it helps that it's fantastic beer that I'm selling to. That's certainly does not help. I mean, it doesn't hurt, uh, you know? So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good to correct that. Um, so I, I will say that it's much needed, at least in, in my neck of the woods, our neck of the woods. Cause you yeah. live up this way because 
a lot of the liquor stores, actually a lot of the liquor stores don't carry or didn't carry up until very recently yeah. brewery stuff. Um, they just weren't very much aware. And the whole thing with the 750 milliliter size that, you know, is kind of on on out at the moment. And people don't go out looking for the information themselves. They need that salesperson to kind of come to them and say, hey, here's what's coming down the pike. Not just like the styles, but also like, hey, we're going to start doing 16 ounce cans. We're going to do 375 milliliter bottles, you know, stuff like that. So my most immediate place that I go to that I talk about a decent amount, Wine World, they had some years ago, they started bringing in the brewery beers, like just a little bit here and there. And it was like the, oh, what's the, what's the Belgian ton... Tonnellery. Tonnellery. Yeah. Tonnellery. Well, that's yeah. like our, um, it was a series of beers we did, uh, basically just an experimentation in oak. So it was different oak fermentations that we did. So they were bringing in like that and like autumn maple and like, I think gypsy tart mm-hmm. and you know, like the basic ish type beers and they sat. And I think part of it was because they didn't know much about the beers. Yeah, and so they just kind of sat there. There are these 750 milliliter bottles, and they're there. So they ended up then just letting them go, basically. They got rid of them on, like, sale, and there was, like, no brewery stuff there. Well, then I started being more passionate about the brewery, <laughs> and I was coming in, and I was just like, hey, you know, what do you guys have for the brewery? I know they used to be here, but I haven't seen anything. And they're like, yeah, we just don't order that anymore. And I was like, why? And they're like, it it wasn't selling. And I'm like, well, do you know what you could be getting? And so I started telling them about, I was like, dude, like, Tart of Darkness. And, you know, and I was just, like, listing off off all this stuff. And they're just like, I mean, we'll look at it again. And and so they did. So I'm going to toot my own horn. I was actually responsible (laughs) for getting the brewery beers back in that store at Wine World. Because I kept saying, oh, this is really good. Every time I went in there, yeah. I'd just be like, I'll oh, just had this by the brewery. This is a really good beer. You guys should pick that up. So they, but, yeah, they definitely have the biggest selection in the immediate area. Um, yeah. And when I, when I first started, they already had several on the shelf. And so, I, no, I mean, you bring up a lot of good points. I think there are certain accounts in, in certain pockets of the market out here that uh, have always supported the brand and done very well. Yeah. And, um, but it, you know, it, it's a niche brand. It's uh, True. when when you talk about craft beer being a niche in the industry, the brewery's place in that industry is even more niche. And uh, it's it's um, like you said, if you don't if if the account that's bringing in the beer doesn't know what the beers are, they're not going to be able to tell their customers. And yeah. nine times out of ten. The, the buyer at a liquor store is going to be more in tune with the industry than the customer coming in the door. And so what are the odds that they're going to know what that beer is? And if you don't have anybody to talk to them about it and explain it to them. So that's a big part of what I'm doing is not only getting out, doing events and tastings to introduce more and more people to the brand, but also taking samples out to, to the stores and, and right. tasting yeah. the, the buyers through our portfolio so that they can find things that they like and that they're going to be uh, interested in pushing and talking to the customers about. Um, that way they're, they've got the right products in each of these stores and they know about them and they can talk about them uh, you know, intelligently and, and in depth with each of their customers. Well, I mean, and I'll- it's a, it's it's a high it's a high end product you know and yes. so if no, you've got true. a if you've got a twenty dollar bottle on the shelf and you're you know it's not only the the customer that they're they're nervous about taking a risk on something they're not familiar with people at the liquor store the, the buyers there they're buying beer every single day all over the place from yeah. you know all different brands it, it's tough to get them to take a risk on it too so walking yeah. them through it and. Um, certainly the packages have, uh, have helped switching things up. Um, so yeah, it's been, it's been, uh, an interesting time, uh, in the brand's history. It's certainly been exciting for me. Um, the growth has been tremendous. Uh, it's been, I bet pretty, pretty wild ride so far for the first two months. Well, I'll tell you the, the portion about actually taking the samples in and tasting them. I think people kind of view that 
especially like outsiders kind of view it as not that necessary. And people are like, oh, well, they're just trying to butter them up by letting them taste some free alcohol. But I think it's essential because that's how you get the buy-in from the people who are going to be there every single day when the customers are coming in. And they're going to say, oh, do you know what I just tasted the other day? (laughs) And I thought it was really awesome. And they're going to point to that because, I mean, I had been in that situation before. I used to work for a liquor store many years ago, and I would do that. You know, they'd come in, they'd taste me on some stuff. I'd be like, that's a phenomenal wine. That's a phenomenal beer. And then I would turn around and recommend that to someone. So not having had that for the brewery and now you are that person and you can do that, that's huge. Especially like you were saying, it's more of a high-end product. Well, that's that's the thing. Like if you take, you know, your your average generic six-pack IPA dry hop with Citra, you can use a few key descriptors. Yeah. And that's going to describe every dry hopped IPA yes. with Citra, yeah. right? Like. It's it, it's a known – not to say they're all the same. Every one of them has their own nuances. But you can very quickly and, and easily cheat and come up with a description yeah. that's going to express what that beer is in general terms to a consumer and help them decide whether or not it's something that's going to be up their alley. Uh, our, we make 70 different beers a year. So there's – That's crazy. There's a beer for everyone, but not every beer is for every person. You know? Right. And – and lots of them have very, um, very nuanced, very complex flavor profiles. Our founder Patrick, uh, he was one of the first master cicerones in the country and in, in the world. Oh, um, I didn't know that. He, I know he was one of few. Yeah, I didn't know he was one of the first. So uh, one of the, he was I think like seven or eight. Okay. Um, nice. And so basically, you know what the the program? It's a it's shows it's a study of beer show you know you have to study for months and months and months to be able to be prepared just to take the exam and um so for him passing it it's it's an incredible achievement but it it shows that you know beer and beer styles um proper ways to to store beer to serve beer um but style characteristics are a huge part of that exam and so he knows styles inside and out uh, and his, uh, I think I heard him say one time, his his thing was he wanted to know uh, everything there was to know about a style before he felt comfortable going in and fucking it all up. <laughs> uh, we, we like I to like take yeah. styles that and just sense. you know start with a traditional base and then just Blow go crazy out. with it. Yeah, um, you know it's if you're if you're just throwing shit at the wall. That's not the same as if you're starting with a, a very traditional beer that's rich in history and then you're pulling different pieces of it and, and just kind of tweaking it and bending it and making it your own thing. And so it's it's much more difficult for beers like ours to just describe it with a generic uh, style framework. Yeah. Um, you know, that all of our – many of our beers are blends of multiple different beers that are themselves a, a – uh, um, you know, a bl- uh, a mix of of different styles. So, well, I'll give you a good example of a beer that you have to taste it to be able to describe it and to be able to know what to tell people about it. Um, one of the beers I got through Reserve Society recently that Rebecca and I had that I honestly I would not have purchased it <laughs> if it wasn't just included in my yearly membership. It was the beer Last Slice. And it was an ale aged in bourbon barrels with lime and graham crackers, and I think lactose as well. And it was supposed to be basically like key lime pie. And that doesn't sound appealing to me. Like, it legitimately does not sound appealing. But it was a crazy good beer when I tried it. And I was just like, it kind of has to be tasted to be believed. It's a insane flavor roller coaster that you would think the lime with all those other characteristics are not going to go. Certainly it's not going to go, but it just does. And you're just uh, like, how? How is this happening? And it's magical. It's I can great. tell you I have had that beer. I loved it. I can't speak about that beer at all. Uh, it, the time that I had it was my first day of employment with the uh. brewery. Uh 
shortly before I was driven and dropped off at my hotel. <laughs> ah, there you go. <laughs> so we had uh, had a little bit of hazing that night. Uh, uh, <laughs> here, try drink. every single beer <laughs> we make. Hey, those are some great beers, though. I mean, you were telling me about some really good ones. Uh, oh, I wasn't. I wasn't complaining. <laughs> your, top, your top two, I think you said the American Anthem. Yes, which, which it's supposed to be like a peach cobbler, yeah. right? Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it, it's <sighs> phenomenal. It's um, it's a bourbon barrel aged ale with peaches, a little bit of cinnamon, some other spices in there, and it's just, it's. I mean, they they nailed that one out of the park. We've got some some of the best brewers in the country, and they're they're killing it. I do have a bottle of that in the fridge, which I'm excited to try at some point. The other one that you said I remember was the beans and rice, which I think is like a base of the horchata. Oh, r- yeah, it's rice with rice and beans. So we take oh, rice and beans. we take horchata, which is our um, our rice based blonde ale, real light body to it, around mm-hmm. uh, seven one seven two percent. Then we add cinnamon and vanilla uh, and a little bit of lactose. The, the lactose sweetens it up a little bit, but it also gives it this like really creamy, rich uh, texture and mouthfeel. And um, I never know which word texture and mouthfeel it's all the same, but no, yeah, lots of people hate the word mouthfeel. I found so I use. Yeah, it sounds dirty. I don't know. I, think that's I love the word, but um, I've, I've started saying texture instead, just because. Well, I think it's because people <laughs> to think of it less as the feel in your mouth as how does the mouth feel. Gotcha. You know yeah. what I mean? Like it, it sounds dirty. So, <laughs> but anyway, we take that but, uh, yeah. that that real light bodied kind of. Slate a little bit of a dessert beer with vanilla and cinnamon, and we add coffee beans to it. Call it rice and beans, and it is incredible. I bet <laughs> it's, it's really good. Really good. I think horchata is good, which you guys just put out recently in sixteen ounce cans. Which yeah, was a smart move, along with the mischief, which was what a Belgian pale ale. Uh, yeah, Bel- Belgian golden ale, dry hopped golden. with citra yeah. and Matueka hops. Uh, sneaky eight and a half percent. So. Uh, I know that longtime listener in the podcast, Kyle Norman, huge, huge fan of horchata. Okay. So much so that when those 16-ounce cans hit shelves, I had to go to Wine World immediately and pick a <laughs> six, a, I'm sorry, not a six-pack, a four-pack up for him. And he has that. I'm sure he's probably already consumed at least one of the cans. Awesome. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, man. Oh, man. It's it's a fun place to work. It's uh, it sounds like it's a fun place to work. My job sucks. Beer, it's a great environment. <laughs> in comparison, hey, man. I like my job, but in comparison, when we're talking, my job is terrible. Is what is how it seems to me. Anybody but. can get into the beer industry. It's, it's uh, true. It's used true. To, used to be an accountant, and I had a quarter life crisis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how you were like thirty? No, you were like twenty seven, twenty eight, something uh, like that. I think yeah, twenty seven. It's probably yeah. It's scary so, that I know these things about your life. <laughs> I nailed like when you when you left that job, and before we started recording, I was, was like, "Your your son's what three? And you were like, <laughs> "This weekend, yes, three. <laughs> I was like, yeah, it's kind of weird. <sighs> I guess I know you, man. I guess so. You've been on the show enough for me to know. <laughs> so it's been too long. It's good to get back. I like no, this. yeah, it has been. So, um. Yeah. Is there anything else you needed to say or wanted to say about the brewery? It's no, it's well. just it's yeah, it's going well. It's a it's a great Good. group of people to work with. Um, Good. You know, we're kind of spread all over the country right now, but it's all you can call any of them up anytime, and they're happy to chat and help me out with whatever I need, and uh, very very friendly, accommodating. It's a nice. It's a cool cool spot to be in. We're we're growing pretty quickly right now uh and so it's it's an exciting time i feel like i've kind of gotten in on the, the ground floor of, of building the sales team up so it's fun <laughs> i would th- you know so so you were coming from a situation where you had to do sales for a bunch of different breweries yeah so i feel like it's it's got to be easier to be able to have more of like a laser focus on it's just the portfolio <laughs> of this one brewery, even though it's a lot of different it's, beers. Yeah, but it's, I was going to say it's almost the same number of beers. Well, it feels yeah, like some days. I can see that. <laughs> yeah, but but the thing is, it's varying different, varying degrees of quality mm-hmm. and different styles of how you brew versus this one. Like it's the same type of quality and. With this instance, like, I'm sure you know that you can confidently go out and be like, this is the beer that's going to come out. I haven't tried it yet, 
but I'm pretty sure it's going to be just as good as everything else that I've tried from these guys. That's, I mean, when when you're with a wholesaler, you like you said, you've got a portfolio of brands, and there are definitely varying levels of quality. I sold some sold some phenomenal brands. Um, mm-hmm. I had you know Dogfish, Dogfish Sierra Nevada, I mean, some of the some of the best quality brands in the country, and um, they were great. And but then at the same time, there were other brands that you have relationships with. Sometimes it spanned many many years, and um, management brewing teams can all all change over time and um you know in in the present day scenario there are some breweries that might not be making beer to the quality standards that uh you would expect and but you've got commitments and you need to go out and sell it and you know your whether um you know your your bosses are giving you goals and you got to go get it done and figure out a way to do it and so it's it's tough because you know your your reputation is tied to those brands that you're selling to, yeah. Um, and that's I mean the great thing about where I work now is the, we talked a little bit about it last episode the 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 quality um, testing and uh, mm. the, the rigorous programs that we put the beers through before they get to market it, it's it's pretty incredible. I mean the, I think the thing that blew me away more than anything else the the week that I was out in California for training um, was how much beer we make that doesn't make it to market. Um, it's it's a, a pretty tough uh, control board that it has to get through to, to make it out to your glass. That's good. Just sending out the best of the best. Absolutely. That's how you <laughs> build that brand loyalty. You yeah. build that reputation and people just be like, every th- single thing that I try, I'm, I'm excited. I'm psyched about it. If you're going to so. spend... Twenty or thirty dollars for a bottle of my beer. It needs to be a good beer, otherwise you're not going to come back. Yeah, you have to remember <laughs> it. You have to definitely remember it. And as you know, as we've seen, although I might be a little bit like freakish with how I remember, <laughs> remember beers, but I remembered a lot of brewery beers, like a lot of brewery beers. Yeah, There's so a lot of standout they're beers that are packed full of flavor, and yeah. it's it. Yeah, it's a fun fun brand to drink, fun brand, brand to sell as well. <laughs> well, I'm glad things are going well on that front. Thank you. And um, let's do mystery beers again. Let's then. do it. All right. So these, like the last episode, they look pretty different. Uh, beer A looks really yellow. Yeah. And can't like see sunshine through. sunshine in a glass. Yeah. Easy. It looks kind of like an unfiltered pilsner, basically. Uh, it's got a little bit of a head still. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's been sitting here for a little while, but there's still a decent amount of head retention on it. Oh, it's kind of like um, it smells like a pilsner. <laughs> I was gonna say it looks like like in the uh, like in the morning when you you walk to the window and you open up the blinds and you don't clean your house as often as you should. And like, it's just like, like dust. I do. There's dust, like a like, wall of dust. Yeah, you get that yeah. hazy sunshine coming yeah, through. That's, that's what this good, beer looks like. That's a good way to describe it. Totally. I see we we both have dirty houses. <laughs> so there you go. I was going to say, my, my wife would kill me, but she won't listen to this, so it'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All good. Yeah. Hmm. Does it have like a Pilsner yeast type smell? Although I do get a little bit a of little medicinal. Banana? Yeah, a little banana, a little medicinal note, like slight aspirin to it. That makes me think Belgian at the same time. I definitely get that like hay... Um, definite hay, crackery malt character, like yep. little biscuitiness. Yep, little biscuity, definitely, definitely, little bready biscuity. But yeah, I get. I wouldn't. I wouldn't go as far as to say medicinal. I guess, like in my mind, medicinal. I, I have like a negative connotation around that. I don't. It's not. But, so for me, there's two types of medicinal. There's like a robitussin type medicinal mm-hmm. where it's kind of like thick and like sweet. Um, this is more. The other medicinal that I have, which is kind of like, just like dry, chalky aspirin type smell. Chalky, chalky. There's uh, there's something, it'll come to me. There's something that I'm picking up here. It's like a, um, it's like a candy. Um, Necco wafers. Hmm. I'm not familiar yeah, with those. Yeah, it's like those Necco wafers. They're, um, they're like almost, almost a little minty, a little menthol-y. Okay. And the, like those, um, 
Yeah, they're, I, get, they're, I get a little They're the menthol. same flavor as those old school candy hearts that you would have for... Um, candy hearts. That's, yeah, exactly. Yes. Necco wafers are the same thing. Same okay. Thing. Yeah. That exact flavor. Yes. And I agree with you that it does kind of smell like that. By the way, Rebecca actually bought Necco wafers kind of recently. Okay. And I was just like, are you buying these for someone? And she's just <laughs> like, no. Like, I, I'm buying for them me. for me. I'm like, why? I was like, I've never known a single human being who's enjoyed Necco wafers. Like, I just assume they're still just making it and throwing them in a landfill somewhere. <laughs> No, this yeah, smells. This smells. Candy hearts like um, Valentine's Day treats. This is. It's Belgian. You just took a sip. I took a sip. It's Belgian. Ugh. Hmm. I get a lot of that kind of like Necco wafer type flavor. It's like almost a little menthol-y on the finish. I was gonna say like. The first sip on the tongue, I get that that Belgian kind of like a spicy yeast. A yeah. yeah. little bit of very, very, very faint hints of like banana or bubble gum. Yep. But then, right. I, and I wasn't, the, um, that, um, that candy character kind of went away from me on the tongue at first, but then I breathed, uh, when I exhaled, it was yeah, all I got, it was everything. I definitely get what I was saying as medicinal, like a little bit of like an aspirin note, and it's on the finish of each sip. It's very drying, too. It definitely just leaves my tongue almost Mm -hmm. bone dry. There's a lot of unique flavors in this. It's not bad. I I enjoy it. I don't think I've ever had anything that smells like candy hearts before i do feel like the the particular way that the that hay note tastes and it's it's kind of like low lying throughout each sip it just reminds me of pilsner like the hay note mm-hmm. that i get in a pilsner like a, but it's belgian so i don't know it's kind of weird it's interesting it's like, um, but it's not, you know, we're talking about like the Belgian yeast character that's coming through, but it's like, um, I feel like, I don't know if there are any homebrewers out there, it's something that was fermented at a pretty low temperature. It's not, you know, the notes are there, but they're not prominent with that like bubble gum banana character coming through. I mean, it's, it's very, um, I wouldn't say subtle either, but it's not over the top in your face, like that sweet bubble gum character. Um, right. And even like the, the candy character that we're talking about, those aren't like overly sweet candies. They're kind of chalky, oh, yeah. Yeah. powdery candies. And that's, I don't know, that's, that's very unique. I don't Yeah, it's interesting. I don't, one of the problems for me always is when I get beers like this, I'm just not huge on, on Belgians. And part of the problem is I get a lot of what I've been calling medicinal characters out of the yeast. Mm-hmm. And that's what turns me off. Like, it literally, in my mind, is kind of like how I feel it would be licking the walls at a doctor's office. You know, like, very antiseptic. <laughs> and just like, you know, it's... Uh, I don't get that at all. <laughs> I'm just saying, it's a very unique way of that I have of thinking of it. So, yeah. That's the best way I can verbalize it, though. I know Kyle Norman will probably text me about that, too. He'll be like, licking the walls at a doctor's (laughs) office? (laughs) Actually, his wife could do that. She's a nurse. Mm. Kelly. Test it out. See if it's the same. Lick the wall at your doctor's office. And then come try this. After it's clean. And let me know what that's like. (laughs) See if I'm close on those. I don't know. Like, those, those candy heart candies are, like, kind of a novelty. Like, I have them once a year, if that. Yeah, you and give so, them to someone to be like, I like you, but not like you good uh, enough not to enough give for you chocolate. candy <laughs> that, that tastes decent. Like, I don't know. I, I've always kind of liked them, though, but I, I don't even know where I would buy them if I wanted them throughout the, the Walgreens. Year. Oh, okay. Yeah, any Great. place like Walgreens, CVS, stuff like that, you can definitely Fantastic. get them there. You'll see me driving around with just a trunk <laughs> full of <It's> gross. <laughs> candy bars. Well, it's like... <laughs> The candy hearts, the Necco wafers, I'm always, like, shocked when I 
I meet people who like those. The other one for me is candy corn. Whenever I meet people who legit like to eat candy corn, I'm like, what? Well, you were just talking about how how well you knew me like five minutes ago. What just happened? I don't know your <laughs> your food habits. You but. just you just attacked my inner core with that one. That's, you have an interesting palate. <laughs> I'll say that much. Patrick Rue, you might want to rethink corn. this higher. <laughs> rethink this higher. I don't know. I will say, for as far as like a Belgian goes, I'm intrigued enough to continue drinking though. Even though I you know, I like it. Solid. I'm not ready to give a um, give a number on yeah, this no. one yet, but I, I do have to sit with that for a little. Well, let's go to B. <laughs> give ourselves a little bit of All time. Right. Um, dark. Yeah, I can't yeah. really see. A little brownish reddish around the edge. Yeah, I was gonna say you can't definitely can't see through it. Like I'm holding it up, looking at a lamp, and like no lights coming through. I mean, it's a pretty dark beer, but there are some what appears to be kind of reddish notes. It's not like straight. Black. It's I'll tell you, I like the smell of this. Ooh, roasty coffee, yeah. chocolate. It doesn't just the coffee doesn't just smell like coffee. It, it smells like espresso, like aggressive coffee. But yeah. I like coffee. I like aggressive coffee. I drink my coffee black, always straight up black. But it doesn't have like a, a, any. I'm not getting any acidity off of it or anything either. It's a yeah. it's a rich, dark roasted coffee. Oh yeah. So you got that coffee, you were saying the chocolate, I definitely agree with the chocolate, which is coming off as kind of a mix of dark and milk, Mm -hmm. kind of. Yeah. And I feel like I get a slight licorice in the nose, very slight licorice, black licorice, not red. And there's probably just got a hint of like a pepper. Yeah, I was smelling that as well, like, in the very beginning, and then as I started smelling all the other things, it started to go away for me, but I do think you're right about a pepper. Some sort of chili. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not like not like cracked pepper, but like, a, um, yeah. like a, some type of green chili. But not, not overly, like, vegetal, but just a little bit of that spice. Yeah, a little, a little heat on the nose. I agree with that. It almost gives it a little bit of an earthy character. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like dirt, but not bad. Not in a bad way. All right. I'm ready to try this. This is interesting. Mm, what is... Ooh, what am I tasting? There's a lot going on there. There is a lot. Definitely the coffee. Ooh. Whoa. Whoa. A lot of coffee. That coffee builds yeah. at the end. That's like heavy. Ooh. Like I said, espresso. That definitely makes me think espresso. Espresso gets real aggressive. It's like super concentrated. But I don't think the beer is is all that um, rich. And I mean, that, that's, that's not the right way to say it. It's not a heavy beer. No. Um, no but it is no. an intense, like, robust coffee character coming through there. So the beginning of the sip, I don't get a whole lot of coffee. It just finishes so hard mm-hmm. on the coffee though and it's like nothing else but that coffee on the finish but going into it it the body's quite light for what i thought it, it would be it's um it finishes you know there's very little sweetness in there it finishes yeah. pretty dry yeah um a good, good amount of the the sugar's been been fermented out and i think all you're left with there at the end is just this this dry like roasty note um from the from the beer, and then that coffee just sits yeah. on top of your tongue. So before, with each sip, before I hit the coffee, I feel like I'm tasting a porter that is pretty well hopped. Hmm. Like it's not a porter; it's it's a stout. But whenever I have Victory Brewing Storm King, mm-hmm. I always forget how hoppy it actually is. Yeah, and I feel like. It's remind this beer's reminding me of that hoppy quality that Storm King has that I'm always surprised by. So like I get that and then the coffee takes over and it, like we were saying it's like espresso like really aggressive coffee. Yeah, you get a good amount of bitterness up front, definitely. This is interesting. I like it's it. Very interesting. I like it. I don't know how much I like it. We're drinking little little snifters of it right now. I'm not sure, like, if you poured me a pint of this, 
oh. how much I would like it at halfway yeah. through, but. I mean, the bitterness really grows because of that coffee, too. As you keep sipping, like mm-hmm. it's like each sip is building off the bitterness of the last one, so it gets tougher. Um, interesting. I've already drank through my water pretty much for like <laughs> to for try and cleanse my palate. Ooh. There's so much sitting on there. I got to be honest. Um, going back to A, I feel like B cleans A up a little bit, <laughs> makes it a little bit lighter, a little more of like taste kind of pilsnery, even though we've established it's not a pilsner, but. Nope, give me all those candy hearts. I've been really digging Pilsners lately, by the way. Like, mm-hmm. just a really nicely done one. Like, I know I've said it before on the podcast, but Union Brewing Skipjack Pilsner. Such <laughs> a nice Pilsner. I know I've had that one. Uh, I don't remember specific characteristics on that. You know, my, um, I, I haven't had it in a while, but my favorite Pilsner of all time is, uh. Oh, you want me to guess? Go for it. North Coast Scrimshaw. That's it. Bam. I know <laughs> it. I knew it. I remember you telling me that some years ago. Love that beer. Actually, I just saw it in 12 packs today. I was, oh, 12. I got, I got real excited. I don't, <laughs> honestly, I don't really see North Coast stuff much. Not a whole lot. It's a few key key accounts uh, still carry them. Um, but yeah, that, it's it's a such a crowded beer market. I mean, that's part of yeah. me coming into this position we were talking about earlier. It's oh, like... Oh, it's crowded. You... Uh, if you don't have representation, you get forgotten, uh, and yeah. not necessarily by the consumers, like you going in and asking the account to bring the beer back in, um, but but by the buyers, you know, if they're they've got reps from a hundred different breweries coming in every single hour, every single minute of every day, yeah. you go into an account to try and sell them beer, and there's a line of you're you're in a queue waiting to get up to the buyer. And so, without that representation out here, it's it's pretty easy to get lost in in the shuffle. Um, yeah, no, that's true. I, I what I do want to see though, I want to see North Coast Old Stock. Like, I want to see that kind of readily available. <laughs> old Stock is awesome. It's a wonderful yeah. old ale. I really like a nice old ale. Um, actually, I'll drop a little bit of information. Uh, gonna do. I don't know how soon or further down the road, I'm going to do a special vertical episode of the podcast and I'm going to do a three, four and five year old old stock. So look forward to that. Do you need a guest host for that show? Because Um, (laughs) I mean, if you want to join, Rebecca's in on it, but if you want to come on as well, I can let you know about when we're going to do it and you can come on. Uh, I also have plans to do some uh, vertical for, um, Backwoods Bastard by Founders and a vertical for Bourbon County. I might have a have some old four ones. or five year old vintage uh, version of the Bourbon Barrel Aged Old Stock. Ooh, I don't know if that uh, sways you a little bit one way or the other, but <laughs> throw a little. <laughs> been extra. waiting for a while for a reason to open that up. Just throwing go. it out there. Yeah. Hey, you got to make your pitches to Patrick last episode. I'm making my pitches to you this time. Got it. Well, you bring Patrick for the old stock episodes. <laughs> and we got a we'll, deal. We'll, <laughs> actually, if he does want to come by and drink some beers, I'm, I'm definitely down with that. Actually, honestly, if he came by, I would actually pull out some of his own beers if you wanted to drink them. <laughs> because I have too many. I know it's kind of dumb to say too many because I will drink them eventually. It's just I've got a lot of beer. I, I got a lot of beer. So, anyway. All right. It's time to think about these ratings. Hmm. Thinking, thinking, thinking. Mm-mm-mm. So, mm-mm-mm-mm. okay. I think I know what I want to do with that. I'm trying to clean out my palate as much as possible to go mm-hmm. back to A. I just got a little bit left in this one. So, B is interesting. I do like it, but it's also starting to wear on me. Because that, like I was talking about, how that bitterness just builds so much from the coffee on the end of each sip. It's getting to be kind of harsh, kind of tough. But A, I mean, for being a Belgian beer, I'm enjoying it. Pretty solid. I'm a fan of the European beers in general. Belgian Belgian beers uh, of all... Shapes and sizes. Well, as I know you like to wear a mankini, it does not surprise me. (laughs) (laughs) 
thought that was off limits for the episode. We talked about that before we came on here. Uh, okay, I'm gonna on a. I'm gonna go a four on a, which is kind of unprecedented for me for a Belgian. I think. Although I think I gave a pretty high one to the triple by Allagash, because that is tasty, no matter what. I really like this. Actually, I'm a fan of... Uh, I'm pretty happy with both of the beers on this episode. Um, hmm. Man, that's tough. Hold on, let me go... Let me try uh, number two again. Or B. Um, I'm going to three on B. I'm sorry. I would bump it up to a four, maybe even close to a five, if that bitterness from the coffee wasn't so aggressive and didn't build off of itself so much. I don't know. I'm sure you're going to open up the bags and they're going to be like dog doo doo stout and <laughs> like something like that and embarrass the hell out of me. But I, I nah. like both of these a lot. Okay. Um, hey, no shame in that game. I, this is what it's about. Yeah. Feel free to like, it's not about brand uh, you, there. You know, there may be breweries out there that you don't really don't like, but they may have a few beers that surprise you. And you're just like, all right, well that's good though. I think I'm going to go, I'm going six on A. Okay. I, nice. That's good. I like it. It's different. It, I mean, that's, you know, it's tough balancing like the, the shock value of something new and, and different and unique with something that you think you can drink a good amount of. And, mm-hmm. you know, like it's not going to be one and done. I think that for me, this beer does that. There are some very standout, unique qualities that I haven't tasted in a lot of other things, but it's also a light, refreshing, easy drinking beer. I think I could throw a few of these back too. Um, I can see that. I enjoyed it. No, no, uh, yeah, good. I'll go with a six there. Uh, and then for B. Oh. <laughs> My what the hell just <laughs> happened? <laughs> My, uh, <laughs> cat shot out of the box she was laying in because her uh wet her dry food dispenser went off we have oh like a, it's an automated yeah we have a timed <laughs> like food dispenser and as soon as she hears that she it's like a bullet it's like a grinder going off behind me and then a cat just flew out of nowhere i was like what the? <laughs> yeah, pretty much uh i think i'm gonna go i'll go f- five on okay. b all right. Five or six, I think I'll go five. Okay. I think just, I mean, I don't know if I should do it this way. Comparison-wise, I liked A more than B, so I think that's going to push it. it down. All right, so we will, uh, both of them did well. So B is a loser, although it did well, with loser. an overall four, <laughs> and A wins with an overall five. So B with overall four is, the hell is this? Fat Orange Cat. Is this... This is by... Somebody was just... I was just talking to somebody about that beer. They'd never heard of it before. They were, they were like, raving about it. Brewed and canned for Fat Orange Cat Brew Company by Dorchester Brewing Company. Hmm. So is that the, the brewery or Out is that Boston. the beer? Uh, so Fat Orange Cat is the brewery. Okay. Uh, the Raven is the name of the beer, hmm. and it is a chocolate raspberry porter. Raspberry. That's right. where that kind of like what I was perceiving as like hoppy character. It must be the raspberry fruit. I just went back and tasted it again, and like maybe pick up some raspberry in there, but it says nothing about coffee. Nothing about that's coffee. crazy to me. Wow. So. I do have an observation about this. This is a 16-ounce can. I have an observation about this. So, Fat Orange Cat, brewed by Dorchester Brewing. Dorchester Brewing, out of Boston, Massachusetts, also does the contract brewing for Decadent Ales. Okay. If you've seen any of their stuff. I've seen them. I haven't had them yet. So, just the other night, Rebecca and I tried their Toasted Marshmallow Double IPA. Sounded really weird. I got it for Rebecca because she's really like some of the decadent stuff, and I've been like good, but eh. 
Um, that toasted marshmallow double IP is pretty good. It's basically I've heard a lot more people putting marshmallow into beers oh, recently. Dude, marshmallow is magical. I'm if it's okay with it. that. <laughs> but the um, yeah, basically what it is is it was um, a double IPA with the addition of turbinado sugar, muscovado sugar, coconut sugar, hmm. and vanilla beans. And that's how they not actual marshmallow in it. It just okay. tastes kind of like marshmallow yeah. with it. And I was like, this is weird, but I think Rebecca will dig it. And I tried it, and I'm like, this is this is good. It's, <laughs> it tastes good. Tastes like a double IPA with some marshmallow. This All right, is, this is really good. I just I didn't I didn't I enjoyed the beer a lot. I didn't pick out the raspberry though. That bitterness is crazy though, and for it not having coffee in it, that bitterness yeah. is really crazy. I cannot believe that this does not have coffee of some sort. In it. I know. It's not. Although I did say it reminded me of a porter, so mm-hmm. I did get yeah. that. Because I mean, it was kind of a giveaway with how light the body was. Mm-hmm. But um, okay, so the winner overall five beer A is. Oh sh! I had this on a. Num- <laughs> I'm pretty sure we had this on the podcast before. Oh, okay, I'll have to compare my my number on it. Daybreak Farmhouse Ale by Falling Branch. Brew, uh, brewery. You did have that on a podcast. I actually 6%. listened to it a few days ago. Yeah, but you. I think it, it was on. It was out of style for what it was. Oh, was that? That was on that big. Oh, I think you're right. You did I a style centric tournament. tournament. Yeah, it was. Uh, you remember back? Oh no, 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 that was the street gathering. Yeah, it was Amber Waves and Street Gathering. Oh, okay. I think I had uh, Daybreak though on another. We did. We did. I gave it a two. <laughs> it was on episode 207. I gave it a two. Well, there you go. Well, Things change. There's a little bit less than that, can I? will. Hey, go go for it. <laughs> this is, but this is why we actually have a policy on the show that I'm fine with brewery, with beers going back in. Sometimes it depends on what you... What, what season it is, what's the temperature outside, what else are you drinking with it... What did you have for dinner before you had the podcast? It can depend on the batch of beer, too. Yeah. That's another big thing. So, I mean, 207, episode number 207, I don't even know when that would have been recorded. Definitely months ago. So, this could be a different batch of beer hmm. at this point. So, Or it could be the same one, and it just <laughs> tastes different. I don't know. Or my taste buds are different. I don't know. We'll find out. <laughs> no, we won't. Tasting it again? What do you think? That's interesting. You've got a look on your face of perplexing. Well, I just poured... Uh, so we're getting down towards the, the bottom of that can. Tastes different? Yeah. It smells the same, way? but I got much more... Um, I got a much higher level of bitterness coming through. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm. yeah I don't know. It is a Belgian style farmhouse. So, Cascade hops used, by the way. I yeah, so I really, really enjoyed that. Good. Well, now you know you can pick yourself <laughs> up a four pack, whatever. The place right. is right down the street from my mom's house. So anytime I go there, oh, there you go. Swing on by. Yeah, do that. I hear it's actually a really nice place. And yeah, the, the space is is pretty right. awesome. It's um, space. It's, it's kind of in the middle of nowhere. And that's great. I uh, oh, literally yeah. like it, it, there's nothing else around. There's no reason to go anywhere near that place unless you're going to my mom's house. That's it. That's, <laughs> and that's usually how it is for me. <laughs> I mean, I'm only going to Sean's mom's house. So, so, um, but no, you go, they've got like a, it's a big, big farm. Um, it's been a farm for a while. And, uh, so that the family that owns it, the, the son, um, started brewing some beer um, you know, in the milk house, they've got a uh, refrigerated room. And, uh, so he's got a bunch of fermenters set up in there. Awesome space. I think they do like use it as like a venue for like weddings and stuff too. Yeah. I've heard that. Beautiful area. They've got it, did it really well. Um, got kind of like the, like cross hatch, uh, like the break up the sun in certain areas of the patio. Oh, cool. To give you a little break. Cause it's kind of out. There's not a whole lot of trees right around. There's like a big open field. It's great for families and stuff, mm. too, so we, we take Beckett down there. He can run around, and um, usually the big kids let him pretend like he's kicking the soccer ball a little bit. And... <laughs> so you, have a, you have a free-range child? Right, yeah. We just 
go have fun. We're gonna go drink be, beer. Be uh. free. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the way to do it. Cool. Well, um, good showing. Good showing on this one. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Fat orange cat and um, um, sorry, falling branch. I will keep an eye out for both of those beers. Thank sure. You. Awesome. Well, thanks again, Sean. This is where we're wrapping it up for you. But like I said, off podcast, you can feel free to come back whenever. Thank you. I oh, appreciate I, it. I think you already kind of lobbied for whenever. For when yeah, that yeah. would be the, so the vertical. <laughs> is that okay. old, old stock vertical tomorrow? Is that... Uh... <laughs> Uh, I got a long weekend, so it could be <laughs> actually if you if we wanted it to be cool. But thank you everyone for listening. Um, I did want to throw out there I uh, all the social medias and whatnot. The website brutalbattle dot com. Uh, you can follow me on Untapped. Be my friend on Untapped. Uh, I'm Carlin Cook uh, or Carlton Malibu, all one word, spelled how it sounds. Um, <laughs> Also, Twitter, at Brutal Battle. I'm Carlin at Brutal Battle. We have a Facebook page, although I don't really update that all that much. There's an Instagram, which I think is just Brutal Battle. Uh, Rebecca's taking care of the Instagram, so it's much better run than everything else, <laughs> pretty much. Uh, I do have some old videos on YouTube of me doing what I call Brutal Battle Beer Breaks, just kind of beers I was drinking off podcast and reviewing them. Um, but I am thinking about potentially doing... Uh, some more, but doing them specifically for brewery beers, the brewery beers, uh, uh-huh. like with the society beers that I've been getting. Um, so, you know, Patrick Rue, if I was like in the hoarder society or something, I'd probably like, you know, do reviews on that. And, or if you, you know, you felt like you, for some reason you wanted to send me like every beer you guys make and mm. ahead of time and I can post a video evaluating it and if getting people you, hyped up for it. If only you knew somebody that worked there. <laughs> if only I did. If only <laughs> I did. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm going to come to that next event he's coming to and I'm going to, it's going to be like the movie Say Say Anything and I'm going to have a boom box above my head just playing the podcast you're on. I'll be like, Patrick! Well, I've enjoyed my time working for the brewery. <laughs> I guess this is where I get fired. Uh <laughs> I'm no, sh- you're too good of a sales guy for that one. I'm Sean Creel everywhere on on all the, the formats that all yeah. the kids are, are using these days. Very good. Uh, no website, though. Sorry. I'm- no, that's... <laughs> well, you'll have to work on that, though. Get yourself a website. But until next time, please remember to keep it brutal. This has been a Nerd Circle podcast production.